Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and I was always told, out of voice radio. So today, I'm going to be answering a question that a whole bunch of you have asked over the past few weeks. Is it time to look again at Alola Ninetales? Now, we just looked at the new fairy type Alola Ninetales GX, and though I wasn't quite as high on it as some of you, I contended it was a fairly good card. But... The one from Burning Shadows is the kind of card that's been sitting there for a long time, looking super interesting. Now, 110 HP is low, there's no doubt about that, and it only does 80 damage for free energy, though with a combination of both double colorless energy and aqua patch, you can actually get it going in one turn, or at least very, very quickly. But really, it's the ability here that just prevents damage, only damage, not other effective attacks like poison, done to this Pokemon by Pokemon GX or Pokemon EX. So, we've been waiting for this to potentially be good. And it's got a lot of good things starting off. You've got Brooklet Hill to search out Alolan Volpix, and then, of course, Alolan Volpix is one of the best evolving basics we've got. It, for zero energy, allows you to search for two Pokemon and put them into your hand. The thing is, with a card like Alolan Ninetales, it doesn't have great HP. Doesn't do a great amount of damage. So essentially, if you can catch the format just right, in it comes to win the day. And it can be put into any water deck. You can play it with Alolan Ninetales GX, who's got a great GX attack for just a double colorless energy, which puts all the damage from it onto your opponent, i.e. they've got to one-hit KO you. And it can put 50 anywhere for a double colorless energy. And it does 160 for free energy, discarding two of a choice badge, you're 190. That's KOing stuff like Buzzwall, and you can use Aqua Patch to get it rolling again. And of course, you can use double colorless here, so you can attach two water and a double colorless, discard it, and then just keep attaching and discarding a double colorless every turn, and that will pay the discard nicely. Or you could put it in an Empoleon deck, or to be blunt, you could put it into any water deck. But is it the right time for a card that's never really seen a huge amount of success? So what I did was I sat down and I started having a look at all the best decks at the moment, and I started digging through deck lists and really seeing what outs players have against this particular card. So if we take the number one deck at the moment, it's Zoroark. But then again, it depends what build of Zoroark you're actually playing. So, if they're playing Zoroark with Garboda, it's it's pretty much all over, to be perfectly honest with you. Because Garboda turns off your ability so that anything can easily one-hit KO you like Zoroark. And even if they don't, they've still got the one from Guardians Rising, and as soon as you've played six item cards, they will be getting a one-hit KO. And then, of course, you've got to go back to the fact that you're only doing 80 damage, and you won't be getting a one-hit KO. Okay, so, th so that's not much good, to be perfectly honest. But then again, Tor Direkle have got second at the North American International Championships with a straight Zoroark list, and essentially his only option was a Ranguru. Now, to be fair, it does do 60 damage and Confusion, which will be two hit KOing you while putting Confusion on, and you won't be one hit KOing a Ranguru, but then again, they don't have Aqua Patch. You do have Aqua Patch, and they're going to generally be playing kind of one Oranguru. So if you can get through a couple of these, you're going to be in a very, very good position indeed. And some of them do play Latios, but I mean, well, what's Latios really doing? It's four hit KOing you. Now, to be fair, it can four hit KO two at a time, because it's doing 30 to each of two Pokemon, but it's still a four hit KO while you're two hit KOing. And, I mean, to be honest, right, if you were doing, like, 120 with this attack, it would just be broken, and I'd be saying play it immediately. You're not one-hit KOing anything, you're two-hit KOing everything, and these decks may well be playing Ace Roller, so you're not actually two-hit KOing. But then again, there's nothing to stop you playing Ace Roller as well, if you feel so inclined. But if you look at something like Zoroark Golisopod, they really don't have many good options at all. They generally basically play like Mew and Mewtwo as counters for Buzzwole. Well, Mew's got 50 HP, so that's not particularly great. And it can only copy the attacks of basic Pokemon, so it's often not going to have an attack that's good enough. 
and you will be one hit KOing it. As for Mewtwo, I mean, Mewtwo for me, Evolutions is fine. Again, it's it's out of one hit KO range. It will be surviving a hit. But, you know, if you've got free energy on you, they're doing 80 damage, which again isn't a one hit KO. You're trading two hit KOs, but they're doing it for just a double colorless energy. And then we can have a look at Malamar decks. Well, Malamar decks at the moment tend to be playing Mewtwo, the promo Mewtwo, the Shining Legends promo Mewtwo. And once again, they're not one hit KOing you. They're coming pretty gosh darn close. And if they were, for instance, to play a Fighting Fury bout, they would be, but the decks aren't. And you're two hit KOing them. But then again, they do have Malamar to accelerate energy, so they're not going to worry about getting all three of the energy on there. Although, as a side note, after rotation, when it comes out, people should be switching out for the new Giratina. And the new Giratina will one-hit KO Alola Ninetales, which is a bit of a pain. But if they're not playing something like Mewtwo, all they've got is Malamar, who is also avoiding a one-hit KO and is two-hit KOing, but it's also their energy acceleration, so they're going to miss it a lot more than you are. And if we have a look at, for instance, Adam Hawkins' list, with which he got top four at the North American International Championships, you've basically just got Malamar. Like, that's, that's pretty much your only option. Although, is actually playing the Giratina promo, which it's expensive, no argument there, but it will get a one-hit KO. And then if we have a look at Boswell decks, for instance, generally speaking, although they may play the odd kind of Mew, for instance, in order to counter other Boswell, what we tend to see is they play the Boswell from Forbidden Light, the non-GX. Now, if you've got four prizes remaining, your Alolan Ninetales goes down super easily to this. Otherwise, they've got to use Swing Around for free energy while adding 40 damage. And that could be a strong energy and a Diancy Prism Star, or it could be a Diancy Prism Star and a Head Flip, for instance, or two Head Flips, etc., etc. And they have, as always, got B-String at the moment to get that energy out. So essentially here, there are very few decks you're locking out of the game here. But you are certainly annoying a lot. Malamar decks, they've got to go aggro with Giratina or Malamar, which, which is not ideal. Boswell decks. Now, some of them are actually going pretty heavy on the non-GX Boswell, so they'll be all right. Ones that are playing one of the Forbidden Light Boswell, they might not be able to keep up here. Zoroark decks, if they're playing Garboda, are going to be absolutely fine. But things like Zoroark Golisopod or just straight Zoroark are going to really struggle to be doing enough damage here. There is certainly potential with Alola Ninetales here. Although, most decks do have an answer. And it's not a great answer. But remember, you're only doing 80 damage. I don't think you could play a deck by itself. Although, if you do... A lot of these counters rely on double colorless energy, so do pack a few Enhanced Hammer with you. But with Alola Ninetales GX, which remember won World in Seniors last year, or with other water Pokemon, could have a fair bit of potential. And do remember that when the rotation hits, Garboda's being rotated out. And with Glaceon only blocking abilities of EXs and GXs, and Alola Muck only blocking abilities of basic Pokemon, the only option anyone's going to have for turning this off is slacking. And don't get me wrong, some people might play slacking, but I rather think they're probably not going to. So maybe after rotation, it gets better than it is nowadays. I'm not going to sit here and tell you this is an amazing card that everybody should be playing, but is it better than its amount of players suggested? I say so. Is it something you should be strongly considering in a number of decks? Oh my goodness, yes. Could it help you on to victory in some? Oh my goodness, yes. But now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to hear from you guys. Do you think this is a good tech? I've had a lot of messages from people basically saying, Hey, Wossy, is Alola Ninetales a really good tech to play now? So I figured, you know what? 
Time to sit down and have a look at it. But tell me what you think in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter, Oluwasi, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all of that, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do just that. But by far the most important thing, as always, is to look after yourselves. Until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching. PTCG Radio.